You know, we are a decent ways into the 21st century and it is still hard to start a new web app. There's so many things to set up from your database to your environment to linting to compiling to authentication. There's a lot of things. Uh, kind of one of the reasons why maybe recently Rails is making a bit of a resurgence, at least according to my Twitter bubble. But today I want to try out, still on the JavaScript and TypeScript side, one of the more popular starting points, which is the T3 stack. This is by Theo, which you might know from YouTube or X, uh, and I've never tried it before. So I'm going to be giving it a try for the first time today, really. I might have like booted one up before, but I've never really used it, never really looked into what's inside of it and kind of how it works. So I'm curious. Uh, from the homepage here, you can see that it comes with a lot of great things built in. So Next.js, TypeScript, TRPC, which I've not used in a production app before, Prisma, Tailwind, and Next Auth for authentication. Uh, so I'm going to be giving this a try. I'm actually going to try this without TRPC because if, if I were to use this for something in the real world, I would probably opt for straight up server actions in Next.js or using something like GraphQL as my data layer. So let's jump in and start from scratch here and see how it goes. I am going to make changes along the way based upon my own personal preferences and what I like to use. So we'll jump through those as well. So let's go to pnpm create t3 app at latest. And I'm going to call this t3 demo. We'll use TypeScript, of course. Tailwind, yes. TRPC, no. Uh, we will use next auth. I want to see how he has set that up with next and the app router. Uh, Prisma, of course, for ORM. Yes, we want to use the app router. We'll, we will use Postgres. Yes, let's initialize a get repo. And yes, let's run pnpm install. Now, this is something I've seen here. What import alias would you like to use? Now, the default with next is actually at slash, not tilde slash. So I'm going to stick with the next default and do uh, at slash. And we're installing and we're done. Okay, so it says the next steps are uh, cd into the directory. Looks like he has a start database shell script that you can run. Uh, db push command, uh, dev to start things up and committing things up. Okay, so let's open this in VS Code. Oops, <laughs> I opened my whole, co whole code directory. Uh, we'll follow the instructions. So cd into t3 demo and then, then I'm gonna open up code. Okay, so let's poke around a bit here, but first I've noticed that it has staged, like it said, staged the git changes, but not committed them. So I do wanna go ahead and commit this up, just commit it fresh as is the initial generation. So initial T3 generated, great. Okay, a good place to start is package.json. So let's look in here. Uh, we've got a few startup scripts. We've got dependencies, dev dependencies. All right, pretty straightforward. I don't see any Docker, um, either Docker Compose or Compose.yaml, which is something I've just noticed. That for years, it's been Docker-Compose.yaml. And then lately in the Docker documentation, I've just been seeing compose.yaml, which is a nice shorter file name. Okay, let's look at the start database shell script. So he is using Docker, uh, well, he, I should say he, it being Theo, and also his uh, 296 additional contributors. So I might say he, I might say they in here. It's it's a nice community project. So Theo and Bunch uh, have been using uh, Docker for starting this up. 
but there is no Docker Compose. I love having Docker Compose because it's um, a very standard way to do that. So this is gonna be my first change, I think, is I'm gonna create a compose.yaml file that will work for this project. So if I look at the .emv file here, we do have a database URL with our Postgres URL, Postgres, password is password, localhost, the standard Postgres port, and a database name. I'm going to change that to an underscore as uh, I'm starting to use more underscores in databases because you don't have to quote things. I had been using a camel case in for, especially for my database columns because camel case is what we tend to use in JavaScript and TypeScript. But for database sake, I think I'm going to start mapping those things to underscores. Now, another thing I've been interested in lately is how can I use AI more? to do more coding for me, especially for things you don't do very often, things you might have to take time and look up, you know, something like creating a compose.yaml file and figuring out what are all the things that you need to set up to properly do this in a database. So I'm gonna pull up my chat here. This is my GitHub Copilot chat. And let's try this out. So I wanna say, uh, create a docker compose.yaml file uh, that will set up a Postgres database based on the URL in the .env file. So it is going to use the .env file as a reference, although in some of my co-pilot chats, I have seen some places where it'll be like, oh, I can't access your files. So I haven't quite figured out when it does and when it doesn't. So it has created this compose file example for us here. Now it doesn't actually write it until you actually insert that into a new file. So let me save this off. We'll do compose.yaml uh, spelled out. And it got a pretty good start here, I have to say. I'm gonna remove the version here. Uh, so services, db, postgres, latest, restart always. I don't know why people put restart always on their database here. Um, I see that in a ton of examples. I don't know why people do that. Uh, Postgres user, Postgres, password's good. T3 demo, it did get our underscore. It is mapping the Docker port to our local port, and it created a volume for us for Postgres data. So that's a pretty good looking compose.yaml file. We made just a few changes. This should easily map to the .env file. Um, no changes here except for the, the hyphen or Postgres, whatever you want to do there. Okay, so let's start up Docker Compose and see the database boot up. So Docker Compose up. So it will be pulling down the Postgres image and start that up for us. Okay, the database is ready. Let me go back to my terminal. And it said start database. So it, it has the start database script, which we created a Docker Compose file for. Then it recommends doing a pnpm db push. Let's take a look at package.json to see what that does. I imagine that is just going to Prisma. Yes, yeah, so Prisma db push. All right, that sounds good. Okay, so let's do a pnpm db push and make sure that syncs up our database. Okay, your database is now in sync with your Prisma schema and it has generated the Prisma client. Excellent. Okay, checking back in the terminal, the next step is running pnpm dev, which I imagine just starts up next. And yes, that starts up next. So we have a database, we have freshly generated everything. So let's do pnpm dev and see this startup. Whoa, we get an error. Okay, invalid environment variables, discord client ID is required and Discord client secret is required. So what is going on here is that because T3 is using next auth, it has to use some sort of authentication method uh, of which it has chosen Discord. This feels very familiar. Have I done T3 stack before? <laughs> this feels very familiar. I'm, I'm curious now if I even did a video in this and have forgotten. Maybe I've just played around with this before, but I obviously haven't used it enough to remember all this stuff. So it's like it's new again. Okay, I don't really want to use Discord. So let's see what our other options are here. I think what I want to do instead is implement 
email authentication, specifically using magic links, because there's a nice example of that in the next auth documentation. For that, I need something to catch emails locally so I don't have to send them with a live service. And for that, there is a great Docker container called Mailcatcher. Let's see if we can use our little GitHub Copilot chat again to do that for us. So add Mailcatcher to compose.yaml. Aha. Okay, so it even caught the actual name of the correct name of the image that I typically use anyway. So nice job, Copilot Chat. Let's just add this in as prescribed. Sounds great. Now we'll need to restart our Docker Compose. So I'll do a Docker Compose up. You can barely see it, but it's there. Pulling down, ready. Okay, so I, I don't really care about getting this. Uh, Ritty the first time, I really just want to get it working so that we can actually finally open this thing up and log in. So it does have a .env file example for us here. So let's pull that into our .env file and we're not going to use Discord anymore. We are going to use uh, email server. So SMTP uh, and in fact, we can use a version of this, but let's say uh, we're doing the mail catcher is the DNS name because that's what Compose will give it. And then the port is 1025. But we're not running our backend in Docker, we're running our backend locally. And so for that reason, we do need to map out the port 1025. So I'm going to save that and restart Docker Compose so that doesn't become a issue lately, uh, later. And for that reason, we do need to map this to localhost because our next app will be running locally and it will need to contact localhost port 1025, which will go into Docker and go into Mailcatcher. Okay, hope, hope that all made sense. Uh, next up, we need to edit our providers. So, and then we have email provider, next stop providers, email. Okay, let's go to... Auth looks like a good place, yes. Okay, so right now it's using Discord provider, but instead we want to use email provider. So let us import that in, email, and we will name this email provider. Okay, now it did have a fancy way of referencing environment variables before. So let me look at our history here. Uh, m dot and then it had these names. So I do want to use that. So let's go into this m file and see how this is being used. So here in T3, there is a source m dot js, interestingly enough, file instead of ts. It is creating this nice little environment object here and it's using Zod to properly ensure that we have all the right environment variables set up, which is really nice if you ask me. So here are our Discord client IDs and secrets. We can see this on the server side, and then we can also see, I think I noticed in here, yes, in runtime environment, we also have some here as well. Um, that's interesting that that's in both places. Okay, so I see that this, oh, okay, I see, I see. So this up here is just the schema of it, the Zod schema. And then this down here is when it is assigning it from the process.env object. Okay, that makes sense. So let's pull up our auth down below here so we can reference what we need. We need process.env.email server and email from. So let's make email server and email from pull those out and then let's go up here and add those in as well. So that should remove all of our red squigglies. If we go back to auth, let's go back to the auth file. Okay, we still have something weird here. I think I have an extra comma. We have an extra comma. No worries, all good now. Let's continue on in the documentation. 
using a configuration object. Okay, so we have all of that. Uh, we did use the email server all as one string, so that's good. Uh, this is just giving you a different way to set up the email provider. We're all fine there. Next up is setting up how the verification requests are actually sent. So it looks like within email provider, there is a property called send verification request, which ends up being your own function. And they've created a function example down here for you, which is really handy. Okay, so let's copy that and go back to our code. I'm going to say that let's create a source slash mailers slash slash auth mailer dot tf. Paste that in. And we have some red squigglies to take care of. First is node mailer. We didn't install that as instructed. So let's do a pnpm add node mailer. Okay, we've got that. Next up, it couldn't find the types. I was thinking that might be the case. So let's, we'll do a pnpm add hyphen capital D for types. Whoops. Paste it in something gnarly there. At type slash node mailer. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Ooh, types. Okay, so we should have the types now. That red squiggly should go away momentarily. Yes, it does. Okay, we have lots of things that aren't typed in here because they aren't typed in the example. Although some of these are. Look, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so send verification request is not quite typed. Let's take a look in here though. Send verification request and it has params. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this type and see what it is. So send verification request params does have its own type that I'm assuming we can probably import. So let's go into auth mailer here and say send verification request params. Excellent. Okay, so that will create a type for us. Uh, now we have create transport. Okay, so that was very strange. I was getting a lot of errors and warnings in this file. And I even restarted my TypeScript server, which typically fixes things and just all over the place, weird things that I wasn't quite getting why they were airing out. So I reloaded my window in VS Code and they went away. So not quite sure what was going on there, but just a tip for you if weird errors and warnings start coming up. Probably has less to do with T3 than perhaps VS Code itself, but just a little tip for you. Uh, I am still getting this warning here. Um, I happen to know that provider.server, which I'm passing in here, is a string. For now, I'm going to just cast that as a string so that that can go away. Uh, I am getting a little yellow squiggly here that says all imports uh, that are only type should say import type. Okay, we will do that. And then we have uh, this function that is declared but never used. So I'm going to export this function and we're going to use that in a different file. All right, so that is happier now. Uh, now we have theme that cannot be resolved. So let's pull theme from, where did theme come from? Next off, okay. Uh, we also have some things in here saying that we prefer the double question mark over the double uh, vertical bar for or. So that's fine, we will use that. So we'll just apply that in a few places. And all of our errors now are gone, except for this, which is now also a type. We'll do import type. Uh, I'm going to organize my imports, which are already in all, uh, alphabetical order, and we can save this, and now this file is looking pretty good. Uh, but we do need to import this from our mailer. So send verification request. It's not coming up automatically. So I'll import send verification request from a few directories back. There we go. Mailer slash off mailer. Okay. I will organize those imports and everything here is happy now as well. Okay, so we've added environment variables. We've done all of this. We've added some packages. Uh, 
I don't believe I'm running the next app. No, I'm not, because we tried to boot it up and we got the Discord uh, environment variable error. So let's do pnpm dev again and see if we can start this thing up. Looking promising. Okay, so it says that it's ready. Let's open it up. All right, we've got create T3 app. Okay. It's running on localhost. I don't have a login button. Am I missing it? No, I don't have a login button. Let's go to the documentation. Uh, installation, we've installed, usage, example, okay. Folder structure, FAQs, first steps. Authentication. Okay, so here's where uh, they're telling you how to set up the Discord authentic authentication, which we didn't do. You should now be able to log in. So looking around here, there are a few things I'm noticing. So first off on the home page, yeah, there's, there's no reference to a login button, which I might have expected. Even, you know, I've just kind of ripped out Discord and put an email even if it was like a Discord login button. I did kind of expect that. The other thing I'm noticing is that we do have next off, a next off route set up, but there isn't any examples for how authentication works with Next.js itself. Like I don't see any server side or client side authorization of sessions here, either by cookies or cookies, <laughs> cookies or cookies. Um, so. That seems a bit off to me. I think I wanna maybe go back to basics here and try a different version of this stack with different options applied and see if maybe some of my options undid some of the magic that I'm wanting to see here. Specifically, I wanna see how they're authorizing the sessions uh, with the next app router. Okay, so I'm going to go back out into my code directory and we're going to, again, create pmpm create t3 app at latest. And let's try this again. Okay, this time I'm going to call this t3 trpc because it may be that by me choosing not to use trpc, it ripped out how they were doing authentication. Truly, true, like full authentication, login, logout, authorization, all of that. So let's use TRPC this time. So TypeScript, will you be tailwind? Yes. TRPC, yes. Next off, yes. Prisma, yes. App router, yes. That could be the other thing. It may be that it's really built out for pages router, which I'm definitely not going to go back to. Uh, so let's hope for app router. Um, Postgres, initialize, yes. PNP install, yes. Import alias, at flash, there we go. All right, so let's cd into t3 trpc and open this up in VS Code. And before we really get going, let's dig into the source here to see if uh, this is a bit different. Okay, I can already see a big difference here. First off, we have get server auth session. So it looks like this is a function to get server session. And this is where it's doing the magic to, yes. Okay, this is what I was looking for. This is where it's doing the magic to use um, next headers, get cookies, find the session cookie. We've got next off secret. Okay, this is a lot more what I'm looking for. So if I look at the page here, first steps, documentation. Ah, we do even have a logged in section. Well, let me go back to my other one and make sure I didn't miss that. No, I didn't miss that. Okay, so when you're doing a T3 stack or create, to, what is this called? Like create T3, T3 app. I'll call it T3 stack. So when you're creating a T3 stack, it's very important to keep TRPC selected. Even if maybe you're not planning on using TRPC, uh, that's how you can at least see how they're doing the session. 
So I'm going to go back very quickly and apply everything we've done so far to our new T3 stack, which includes TRPC. You can either watch this or skip ahead. I'll make it fast. So I'm first going to commit all of these things. Uh, initial T3 generate. Next, I'm going to pull in our compose file. So pull in compose, create a new file down here. Paste that in, we're good to go. Next up, our .m file. I'm going to bring in our email schema, as well as our email options. Next up, our .m file, .m file. I'm going to pull in our local or our, yes, our SMTP set up here. So email server and email from. Replacing the Discord provider. I'm also going to make this an underscore for the database while I'm here. Next up, I want to pull in this auth mailer that we created. So source, uh, maybe we put this in server. Nah, we'll put it in source. Source mailers slash auth mailer. There are some things in auth mailer I'd probably want to clean up eventually, but uh, this will work for now. So pnpm add node mailer, and then also pnpm add hyphen d at type slash node mailer. Okay, so we've added those in there. And I, I am again getting all these red squigglies. Let me see if I can recreate this. Reload window. No red squigglies. Not sure why that is. Okay, and finally in our auth file, I do want to set up the email provider. So in our auth file, I want to set up the email provider. And can we import that automatically? No. Email, email provider. Okay, then we'll import this from somewhere. Import from uh, mailer slash auth mailer. Send verification request, organize those, save, and we're good. Okay, I think that's all the changes. We'll see in a second when I try to boot it up. So let's do a Docker compose up. We've got a database. Then let's do a pnpm dev. We have an application. All right, now let's open this up in the browser. It's compiling. Aha, here's what I expect. Uh, we do have a hello from TRPC. Thank you, TRPC. Uh, but we also have a sign in button. That's what I want to see. So let's click on sign in. And we even have a, uh, a basic email sign in screen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's open up localhost 1080. And this is our mail catcher interface. So if you're not familiar with mail catcher, mail catcher is that Docker, com um, Docker container that we're running which is essentially an SMTP server. You can send things to it, but then it also has this web server built into where you can see the emails. So this is how you can test out email sending locally without having to have an email service set up and connect your local machine to that. So let's just do kevin at stokestudio.com. Not available. Okay, let's see what went wrong. We do have an issue here. Ah, I did not create our database. Common bug. Okay, pnpm db push. Now everything's missing. Okay, pnpm dev. Let's try that again. So let's go back. We've got my email address. Sign in. And there we go. Check your email. Sign in link has been sent to your email address. Here it is in mail catcher. We've got that here. Ah, a beautiful email. 
we're going to click on sign in. That will open up localhost. It will come in here and we've got logged in as blank. <laughs> Little blank. That's okay. It was maybe expecting some sort of discord username or something like that, which we don't have. I will forgive it. But it does recognize that we are signed in and everything. I can even create a post here. My first post. Submitting. And we've submitted my first post here. So that is pretty cool. Uh, and yes, okay, so I'm looking at the home page here and I can see logged in as session username. We don't have a name because we've only given an, e an email, but I can see the email is an option here. So if I save and refresh that, that is correctly here. Now notice this is being rendered on the server side. So it is using this get server auth session in order to, um, in order to get the session here, which I do like. So already kind of almost out of the box. I didn't use Discord. So Discord really is out of the box. So I ripped that out and put in email auth, but really out of the box, we do have the ability to get um, server side uh, sessions here, or I guess it's maybe not server side sessions. It is server side accessible sessions. What is also nice about this is if you are using TRPC, I'm poking around in here and we've got an API, TRPC file. Uh, it does have set up for protected procedures. So if you're familiar with TRPC, um, you can set up different types of procedures. Uh, often the common examples are public procedures, which don't require any authentication and protected procedures. And uh, T3 and team do already have this set up for utilizing that those next auth sessions and ensuring that there is a user. So that is pretty cool. Uh, if we go into the router here, I can see that the hello route that is a public procedure. So we've got inputs there. And then the create route for the creating of the post is a protected procedure. Okay. So that is a really cool feature of the T3 stack is setting up next with next off with TRPC and all of that together is quite a bit of manual hookup. And especially when you're inspired to create something new, try out a new app, then that's a lot of pieces to hook up. And by the time you're done hooking all that up, you're probably exhausted and wanting to move on to something else anyway. So that is pretty cool. Even if you don't use TRPC, even if you wanted to use server actions or something like that, then utilizing this does come with the pre-baked ability to get those server side sessions utilize next off. So you don't, you wouldn't even have to use TRPC if you didn't want to. So there we go. That is my initial test drive with the T3 stack. We did a little customization along the way, adding Docker compose for Postgres and mail catcher, as well as the email based authentication for next off. But aside from that, it's a pretty nice, uh, starter stack package that comes with Next.js authentication pre-baked in, and even TRPC if you want to use it. But pro tip we learned in this video is always say yes to TRPC. Otherwise you'll remove some of the authentication magic. Anyway, I, that's a pretty good experience. I think from my end, if I were starting something new today, I'd probably strongly consider using this just to have the next off automatically hooked up with Next.js, get server side sessions uh, working with low lift and uh, just get going with building. Hope you enjoyed this video. Drop me a like if you did, and I will see you next time. Have a great one.